It's Wednesday, March 8th, 2023 at 2 p.m. Uh, this is the uh, City of Tarpon Springs Public Art Committee. We are in the City Hall second floor media room. Um, we have a new member appointed by the Board of Commissioners, Sonia McGrath, as an alternate who will be on board in April. Megan, can you call the roll, please? Yes. Mr. Toth. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Mr. Stackhouse. Here. Ms. Arbitello. Here. Ms. Wood. Here. Chair Jennings. Here. And uh, I'd like to note that uh, Biba is absent, and uh, I believe this is the fourth out of six meetings she's missed. So uh, we have two guests today. We have uh, Ms. Elizabeth Indianos and Ms. Tina Bukabalas. Okay. Um, meeting minutes from February 8th. Do I have a motion to accept as submitted? Yes. Um, okay, Graham, second? Yes. Nick? Yes. Okay. Um, is there any discussion, any comments, corrections to the minutes? They look good to me. Okay. Okay. All in favor of accepting the minutes as, submission, as submitted, please say aye. 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 Minutes accepted. Old business. Current project updates. Um, since we have Miss Indianos here today with her video, I'm going to suggest that uh, we move the order up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Megan, do you want to? Uh, as you all know, the uh, Public Art Committee approved a uh, film project uh, based on Miss Indianos' mural that's in the Cultural Center. So uh, it's complete, and she brought it in for us to view today. So this is the premiere. I want a, I want a swag bag. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Growing up in Florida, starting around the age of eight, um, it, it was always my mother's dream to come to Florida. And so we traveled, a family, uh, a bunch of kids traveled to Florida as an exploration. Uh, in an old green station wagon. We came and uh, we lived a variety of places. My parents bought some property, and from then on, it was Florida. With all the things you kind of can imagine, uh, living on a dirt road, walking around without shoes, seeing a lot of snakes, uh, getting stabbed with a, a point of a palmetto frond, and um, it was raw, wild Florida in a way that I think is somewhat conveyed a little bit in this mural. Florida, like many states, has a complicated history. There's a lot to deal with. Um, it's a harsh environment. Uh, you can imagine the harshness of those first settlers that came here in the um, you know, 1800s, 1900s. Uh, I can imagine what it must have been like for the Indians, indigenous here, to learn how to live in Florida. And there's also the history of racism, Indians being forced to leave their home and find another place. There's just so many influences. I, I imagine the explorers, and I did in the play, uh, This Blessed Plot, This Earth, I imagined those first experiences of a conquistador coming here surrounded by exquisiteness, flowers and wildlife, and, and what that must have been like for the very first people. Florida. Florida is a magical place because of its history, in spite of its history sometimes. It's a complicated history. Um, and I guess, in a way, we don't really know enough about it. Some of us do, and historians. But I think it, I think it helps give the overview to people coming to this state uh, to know what we're about. You know, it's like, in some ways, it's bragging rights to Florida because people love it so much, but also what have been the hurdles to making this place work? And what do we do about it now? You know, where, where, where are we gonna go with this? Florida is like a pilot state for that in a lot of ways. 
I got an early impression of Tarpon Springs when I was, I think, 10 years old. Um, my parents lived in South Florida, West Palm Beach area, Lake Worth area, and uh, five children, a lot of children. And, uh, you know, Sunday was a special day. It was get in the car day and we're going to go for a little ride. Well, that little ride, one of those little rides was all the way to Tarpon Springs five hours later. And um, eating the food and feeling all at once with my Greek background, so at home in the city. There was just something about it like I'd been here before. It had a special magical meaning to me. I don't know why. I don't know why that is, but it did. And uh, then later I returned, you know, in graduate school. So there are a lot of influences in Tarpon Springs. The indigenous people who were here, uh, Seminoles who were here, um, other, other uh, pioneers who came in here. So it has a rich history of development with the railroad and the streetcar and the steam, uh, steamboat and celebrations like Epiphany and the Greek divers that dive every January 6th. It's just so rich. Um, and I think that is probably the takeaway for people who come here. Uh, it's rich and it's accessible and it's still not so overdeveloped to where it doesn't, it has an air of anxiety about it. Uh, you come in, people come in and they visit the city and I think they leave with a, a pretty good feeling, a pretty good impression. That's how I felt, you know, at eight years old. <laughs> still there. Many years ago, when I was artist in residence in this community, uh, I got to know people. I got to know people who uh, were, have been here for a long time, have been part of Tarpon Springs history, and I began uh, talking to them and hearing their stories and what was important to them, kind of like the history of Tarpon Springs, you know, and there was a, uh, a book written by Gertrude Stoughton about the history of Tarpon Springs, and um, I came to experience all those different people and what their lives were like and it eventually became my life as well. So um, to tell a story from 1500s to the present seems appropriate and I think partially it has to do with if you, uh, if you listen to the historical examples I have here, their voices start to speak. They did to me anyway as I was painting these characters. I was also kind of hearing how they might talk and hearing what they might say. And I think that um, maybe if you wanted to view them as ghosts, they always have a way of communicating to us and telling us their history as a, a secure connection to the present and the future. So um, don't forget us, don't forget us. You might hear from these characters and with that, if we don't forget them, we kind of know the direction that we might aspire to go in the future while we're in the present. So it's important to pay attention to what people past, present have to say. The Public Art Committee approved this historical mural um, and then it you know, that took a couple of years to do, to get that through and passed and approved uh, by the, the commission and, and the powers that be. And then when uh, we had to prepare the wall, uh, which I did, and right after preparation of the wall, boom, it was time to shut everything down in the city because of the pandemic. So uh, those were difficult times. I, I, I remember walking in here, setting up my paints, uh, putting a little sign that the city had public art uh, project, and then leaving it with nothing. Uh, paints here, the wall prepped, and I remember leaving and thinking, I don't know if I'm gonna come back here. I don't know if anybody's gonna come back here. But we did come back, so if everything shut down in March, uh, by the end of May, June, I was back in with uh, the cultural center uh, 
and I had staff come in and let me in and let me out, and uh, that was those were my days. And then it took about a year after that. All these characters you see were auditioning for the part. You know, if you think of it as a movie or play, or uh, so you know how to pick the face, the outfit, the the position of every one of these characters was huge. So, for example, the Florida panther on the left-hand side, or the alligators, or the birds. There are hundreds and hundreds of choices I could have made and struggled to make to know which, who's going to be cast in this. You know, I did have uh, the mural, the original uh, drawing that I did years ago when it was on the highway on a building in Tarpon Springs. But 40 years ago, that's a whole different thing with cars whizzing by on Tarpon Avenue as opposed to being in this giant gallery, really, where people are close, where children are going to see. Um, new things had to happen. Uh, animals had to face their audience as opposed to just look to the side. Characters had to face their audience or have more significant meaning uh, than just briefly seeing a flutter of a mural as you're driving on, on the road. So who got cast for these parts? That was, that was the research. That was a full year of sitting down and meeting all of these characters through my research and saying, okay, you got the part. <laughs> well, once I um, have my sketch worked out, and like I said, I had to really do a lot of creative adaptations from 30 years ago, whatever, when I painted the first one. Um, and so I, after the drawings, which took a long time uh, to do, became definite, uh, then I did uh, take pictures of one half and then the other half. And uh, this was right before everything closed down. Uh, I remember there was a performance, I think a Shakespeare going on in the theater there. And I came while they were rehearsing, turned all the lights off and projected. Uh, the first time I projected, it was a mess because the wall was not the wall that you see here now. It was not a smooth surface. It was stucco, it was bumpy, and it started to peel. So I spent one, you know, I spent a while doing that first drawing and I'm like, this is not gonna work. It will never happen in here. And so the wall then had to change and we had to have people come in and, and resurface it and do it. And then I did a second time of projecting and then I had the drawings on the wall. But even though they were on the wall, some things weren't right. Like I'd mentioned the Indian chief, I thought he has to be bigger, this is not working. So I would just go and hand draw right on the, the wall itself when things needed to be different or changed or edited. So um, that's, how, that's how I did it. I, I drew it and refined it and refined it and projected it and then refined it as I was drawing on the wall and um, began began painting in one little corner. I sat on the floor, and the first thing I painted was that alligator, Virgil's eyeball. And then as I started painting him, and he got big toothy grin, I called my friend Susie Gablick on the phone. I said, I am painting Virgil right now. And she said to me, because she was blind at this point, she said, does, does he have a big toothy grin? I said, oh yeah. He's got a big toothy grin, because that's how we saw him. And then I just jumped around. I think I, I painted part. Uh, I painted Virgil, and then I ran over and painted uh, Gigi Raccoon, and then I went back and forth and back and forth. When I got, to, uh, we had scaffolding in here. The Public Art Committee did um, purchase some scaffolding, and so that enabled me, that was uh, set up here in this room, on wheels, so I could move that scaffolding wherever I needed to. I could climb up to the middle, get up to the top, and lock the wheels down and just do that. So it was up and down, up and down, then sit back and look and see what I have, then up and down, up and down from there on out. I did not paint anything else. Imagine nothing else is here. These other things after came after. And then I went way over here, 
to the other side to paint Gigi Raccoon. <laughs> So I sat here, I did have scaffolding, but here I am, um, you know, sitting on the floor and in a, with a chair and painting this beautiful little raccoon and then started writing a story. Well, after I painted Virgil, I started writing, you know, I kept a diary and started, I guess, writing the play in retrospect. Now I realize it and then wrote about Gigi Raccoon and how she was so devilish and whatnot. And um, I think from there, I started to paint the blue heron, which I consider Gigi Raccoon's mother, and um, just started taking on the different characters. Um, I'd have to look at some of my pictures, but who came next? It might have been, um, I started on the Indian afterwards, meaning um, the chief, uh, indigenous chief, and felt like I had to get the face is right. It might have even been the princess, I don't recall. But I started with these characters first, after those two animals, and uh, re redrew it and redrew it. And, and yes, I projected it, but then it was the wrong size and kept getting him bigger and bigger and um, used, uh, you know, wanted to get the details right but he had to have the right headdress. Well, what headdress was that gonna be? Um, and I think that part of the reason why I painted that headdress was I had seen pictures, but then when it came time to write the play and to work on costumes, well, I had to find this, and we had to create a, a likable translation for that, for um, most all of the characters, actually. I really enjoyed when I got to um, this, this alligator, I'd already painted Virgil. I gave myself license to go even a little bit more expressive and abstract. So these, these little scales and this claw, which I just love this claw, became explosively abstract, as did some of Virgil's, uh, Virgil's details. Like, I liked keeping this abstract and not having color in there. In fact, somebody asked me, well, aren't you gonna, aren't you gonna fill that in? Did you miss a spot? And I said, I didn't miss a spot. That's exactly how I wanted it to be. And it gave me so much license, those areas, to do these, like the pelican. I thought, oh, this guy, this guy was cast out of a zillion pelicans. Um, I liked the way he looked. I like the way he's looking, kind of, and I like the way how he's hovering and not really, hasn't landed yet with his big feet. But I thought, oh my God, I have to paint all these feathers. I don't want to sit here and do realist stuff, you know, to where it's like an Audubon society. But he's so expressive and the feathers work so exciting. I found a way to make a translation for each of these feathers in a way that excited me more than if I'd sat there and like, let me take 10 years to paint the pelican. Um, the expressiveness of it is exciting to me. Here's another alligator. Again, we have some parts are, you know, these squares, these dots stand for that. Um, the eyeball, you know, is comparable to Virgil's eyeball. He's eating a fish. Um, those were exciting things to me. give myself the license to, to zoom in and zoom out, zoom in and zoom out. Um, things can be, they're good enough in places, and then there's places where the storyline has to carry, has to carry on a lot of the faces, have to get those right. The details, let's say, <clears throat> in the chief, oh, how can I miss those? Uh, the feet of the chief, as I was working on his, his boots and things, I thought, Oh, I really love how if I crosshatch, it looks like a comic book drawing. You know, this is like a, a superhero. And so I like the crosshatching that you might see in a comic book artist. I love that reference to art that way. But then also I, I wanted to get every bead and, and, and uh, bling that there was to be had on other areas. 
I didn't need to put bling on the jeans of the cowboy, you know. <laughs> so, and I did want to get Annie Dabbs' dress. Um, when I first took pictures of her, I believe she had that dress on, my first meeting with her many years ago in a cemetery, before this was a mural and before this was a play. I just took pictures of her. And I thought that dress was important, so I wanted to get the details. The actress wore her dress. Um, so those things were nostalgically important to me. Einstein says, all distinctions between past, present, and future are an illusion, if but a tough one. So it's necessary that we understand those distinctions are an illusion to be open to uh, what is said, I think. And I think what I take away from my lessons, having painted this and also written the play, is that um, many of these characters had a really hard time. We all have a hard time, right? Uh, they had really tough times. But they also, I can imagine, had glorious times. Every single character here, from the conquistador to the, to the indigenous peoples and the African-American peoples and uh, the Greek immigrants and pioneer families, you know, such is life. There is, uh, there's goodness and there's challenge. And uh, we were talking earlier about, um, yes, it can be really, Reality and humanity is tough. But as long as we know that we're gonna try, then that gets us up in the morning, that we arc, the moral arc of the universe bends towards justice or to doing the right thing. Then I think those voices, those ghosts, and you know, have something to add to the conversation. I know they did for me, painting this in lockdown, in COVID for a whole year, isolated and by myself. Those were tough times for all of us back then when we didn't know what was gonna happen. and Were we even gonna continue? I mean, everything was in lockdown. I had no idea where we were gonna go with this um, pandemic thing and uh, not to dwell on it, but these are the voices that spoke to me and got me through it by the mere sheer fact that I was here bringing them back. So they found a way to speak to us. The play and the painting of the mural happened simultaneously. I didn't expect that that would happen, but it did happen. So as I started painting, I quickly took notes and typed up notes and kept a diary of the day-to-day -day things and the thoughts that would come to me. And before long, there were, dialogue was coming to me. Virgil, the alligator, was saying things to me. The characters just jumped kind of onto the page, off the wall and onto the page. So as a multidisciplinary artist, that's just the way I've always worked. And, uh, you know, it used to be a problem years ago because you had to either pick you're an artist or you're a playwright or you're one or the other. Um, I've been, uh, I've written four plays and with each play, I have a collaboration with uh, Michael Amish, who's the composer. And we just get going and, it, you know, we start hearing it and seeing it and all the senses come into being at once. It's just the way I work. I've never been able to pick one thing. They just happen together. There's video and all kinds of stuff on that too, so you can like get a sense of like how the music is used within context of dance and other types of performance. So I can send you, I can send you everything I have on that. We had a lot of hurdles because we were in a pandemic. And um, it was a challenge every day. I mean, I didn't know, none of us knew day to day if we were gonna be able to do the performance. That being said, so there must have been some special guiding light over us that, that made it happen, but we never knew from one day to the next who was gonna get COVID, who was gonna drop out, would 
actors even want to come and do this, given that it was such a treacherous kind of journey to do. But we did, and uh, I'm still kind of amazed at that. Uh, it was just a miracle, that's all I can say for all of us. I still have to pinch myself to, to adjust to the fact that we did it. <laughs> What about oh, more tickets? We are sold out to capacity, yeah. <laughs> to the gills. It looks heavy, I don't want you. Yeah, it is. Here, it's got a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so here we go. Oh, wow. Right. Oh, mom. <laughs> oh, oh, there's the dress. You're right. There's the yes. dress. Look. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Wow. You got the dress on. You Come take a peek. Close. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. That is it. Yeah. Oh my. What a. Oh gosh. That's great. You did a great job on that. Oh my goodness. So? Yes. Well, let's go. Let yes. me see if I got your hair right. Well, I have on a band too. So. Yes. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh my goodness. I feel good. <laughs> you feel good? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you know, Annie, it's uh, when you look from left to right here, mm -hmm. um, you are the only person who's a real person here. Really? What yeah, about? well, I mean, yes, that's, this person is, they're historical figures. Oh, okay. They're no longer around. Oh, um, okay. So they stand for this is Billy Bowlegs and wow. then the Spaniards mm -hmm. and then the pioneer families that were from a painter oh, called Remington. Okay. So they're, and the animals, of course. Yes. But, and a sponge diver, but it's not a particular oh, yeah. sponge diver oh, wow. or particular right, epiphany yeah. divers. Right, yeah. And then, but that's, but we know that's you. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? The animals. The animals are, it, animals are nature. They're always, they're looking out at you like intention here with nature, you know. Keep in harmony with nature. And the, uh, the title is um, This Blessed Plot, This Earth. That's the title. It's a line from Shakespeare, actually. Yeah, so you did. Yeah. It was amazing that Annie was here for the performances. She did also come to rehearsals when she could. And every time there was a, re a rehearsal and her lines were spoken by a wonderful actress, uh, and during the performances and rehearsals, she was always transported, moved to tears, I would say, because she was hearing these her words and her life and her heart, so to speak, and the inroads to that again and again. I don't think she ever thought possible that that, that was gonna happen to her. I remember um, one person telling me that their ability, it was uh, Lynn Whitelaw, former director of the Leeper Ratner Museum said, when I looked across and there was Annie and I saw her face, I felt like, and the whole experience really of the play, I was transported in that I didn't just feel like I was watching history as an outsider, I felt like I was in history as it was happening. So that's a big time jump and I think Annie kind of secured that spot. You were watching history unfold in her, I mean yes she's on the, she's painted on the mural in a dress that uh, I asked her to bring to the actress so she could wear it in the play, the shoes and everything. She's on the wall for as long as this wall stands. She's in the play for as long as this play can be seen uh, in, in a movie, film, thank you. Um, but people have walked away with experiences saying they will never forget being there as history was unfolding, as they watched her face, heard her story, but felt her feel her story. I think um, one of the, uh, well, the choreographer, Paula Nunez said to me, uh, as we watched this, and we're always tearful when we watch this, this, her story being told in rehearsals, 
she turned to me and she said, you've made her life. <laughs> now, I, I don't want to say, you know, I did something like that, but you could see that it was, it was a, a big moment for her, and that's, that's the point. And I'm happy to have made that happen. I can't help but reflect on uh, the mission that I was given 20, in my 20s, which was to come here to the city to further enhance and define the identity of Tarpon Springs. Uh, I did a lot of projects in doing that, uh, wrote, wrote all my plays here in the city, did a lot of public art projects which includes the mural that was, uh, and murals throughout the city. There's a starburst, there's a lot of different things. Um, but now that it's here, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm grateful for the message that I think um, people may walk away with, that we're still here. Uh, personally, I feel like, well, I hope I did my part to convey that for these characters, a big responsibility. And I remember telling actors, you are bringing this person back to life. You have a responsibility. They're talking through you, you know. Well, I'm talking through them. And also um, the mission that I was given early as a young person to come here and uh, I remember, uh, do, I remember uh, it was a good, a wonderful guy, Edward Hoffman, who was on the Historical Society and did a lot of wonderful things in this town. And when I first met him right out of graduate school, I was in graduate school at the time while I moved here, he said to me, Elizabeth, we need an artistic dictator to come here to Tarpon Springs and make things happen. Well, I didn't want to be a dictator, but I did want to help lead the direction where uh, his love for Tarpon Springs and all the people I talked to and told me their stories, uh, their love for Tarpon Springs and my love for Tarpon Springs, having lived most of my adult life here, raised a family here, um, have wonderful experiences here. I hope that I, I uh, spoke for, the, for our community. Elizabeth, would you like to say anything? Oh, that was great. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, okay. Well, yes, I would just like to say a few things. I'm very grateful to the city of Tarpon Springs and the Public Art Committee and all of you all for your part in making this come about. It was, you know, a great honor and uh, means a lot to me, having come here 
like I probably said too many times, <laughs> as a young person, now I'm an old person, older person. And so it's really a kind of a pinnacle moment that you all help to facilitate. Uh, thanks to uh, Joan Jennings for early on spearheading this along with, with Diane Wood and those some members that are, are even aren't even on this committee anymore. But um, I'm just grateful and um, really appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you. Any <laughs> comments anyway. from the committee? I love it. Thank <laughs> you. Oh. Well, thank you. Thank you very oh, much. Yeah, it was good to, I'm looking at you all sitting here, the, you know, Nick and Graham, <laughs> and, I, and I remember seeing you, and there you are again. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great work of art. It's also um, a great resilience story for Britain City. It really is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'd just like to mention that uh, we have another guest, Stephen Oliver. Okay, who's come in? Okay. Um, I don't think we have to do anything else with this, do we, Diane? You have to um, vote to accept it as is, or if you required any revisions. You, so if you accept it as is, then go ahead and vote on that. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to uh, accept the film as submitted? Yes, I'll do that. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any dissensions? Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Film is accepted as. Okay, we're going back to the uh, agenda, and we have Mr. Oliver here, uh, Black Heritage Project. Um, okay, um, I've been told by our city manager that the next meeting of the Board of Commissioners is going to be an artsy one, because there's going to be a lot of art topics on the agenda, one of which is the location of Mr. Oliver's sculptures. Um, the location on the sponge docks and at the Union Academy neighborhood in front of the CAP Center um, will be um, up on the agenda for approval at the next meeting of the uh, Board of Commissioners. Stephen, is there anything you want to say or? Actually, <laughs> both locations. Yeah. What? Both locations. Both locations, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I figured I'd come just in case after you had any questions and things, but um, okay. Okay. No. Things, are, things are percolating along. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, the Riverside Field Mural Project. And I'm going to turn this over to Dawn, who did three great drafts of uh, Qualtz Artists. Yeah, so I'm, Diane was nice enough to send um, a call to artists with a comprehensive information about it, but um, we wanted to put together a couple of ideas with a little less information that might um, peak people's interest and then direct them to a website for more information that's more detailed. So I've put together three options, um, one with uh, more information, that's uh, marked A, um, halfway in between is B, and um, C has the least amount of information. All of them would include a, a QR code to send them to the website for additional information. So. I've given uh, everybody these options. I just chose a couple of generic um, uh, tennis and soccer uh, images just to kind of let people visually know what, what the uh, mural is about. Um, so we, you know, picture is worth a thousand words. So okay. um, if anybody has any comments on A, B, or C, their preferences, um, well, or I, think, I think a general comment on all three of them uh, under compensation was that um, we were going to put a parenthesis S because we might have two artists doing right. uh, the murals, and we were going to delete whose design is. So the artists chosen. Okay. Yes, um, I will mark that on all of them. Okay, Graham, do you have any comments or preferences? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I do. Uh, the um, A and B with the um, the two images. Um, as they are and compared to C with the image in reverse. I don't like the reversal of the image at all. Okay. I think it, it, it detracts. Um, but the um, but A and A and B I like whichever one anybody else wants, I'd be perfectly mm -hmm. happy to go along with. Okay. Um, I like them both. I think it's a, they're both very pleasing to the eye and hopefully they'll be um, attractive enough to an artist to get their attention. 
<laughs> I hope so. Um, and whichever one is chosen, uh, once it's finally decided, um, I'd be happy to also put together, um, you know, a graphic that we could put on a social media post or whatever that would kind of tie into it so that, you know, we'll have right. a little consistency there. So. Right. And I see you have a blank for a QR code. I guess that's I do. something else we could we could discuss. Yeah. Robert, are you? Um, as far as the, the, the three uh, um, call stars, uh, the, the number A, or number A, the letter <laughs> yeah. A. Yeah. Um, You're an artist. Number A works. Well, yeah. it, it, well <laughs> yeah, right. and, and this one works for me because whenever I'm looking for a uh, call artist or whatever, I want as much information as I can get. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think uh, it's, it's not like you have reams of stuff here. It's, it's, uh, it's all on the page. Um, and... Uh, I think, would that be going out with this one? Uh, no. As far as I know, this would be going out, and then the QR code would send them okay. for photos and the dimensions and all that kind of stuff. All right. So to then, um, okay, I'm, I'm just saying that whenever, again, I'm looking at these things, uh, the other thing I look, first thing I look for is what the price is. You know mm -hmm. uh, what the what the thing is, and then what does the site look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so this doesn't have a site on it. It has the suggestion of the images. That's why I was just wondering if this. So it's up to the person to connect it to by going to the QR code. Right. Um, yeah. So depending on where these are sent out. Mm -hmm. um, that we can include more information or less information if we wanted to have this two-sided or whatever. We could put more detailed information. I think it was just um, uh, my concern that if you hand, you know, if this is just laying on a counter, nobody's going to take the time to read all of this information. And this might get their attention and draw them in enough to then go seek out additional information. Right. But you know, obviously I'm open to everybody's suggestion, anybody who mm -hmm. thinks it needs more information on there. We, I can certainly, um, well, you know, we could do two sides or whatever, so. Yeah. Well, while I understand, um, if I may, can I mm -hmm. jump in Go there? Right yeah. Yeah, while, I, while I understand um, Robert's concern about um, seeing the location um, and having that information readily available to the artist, um, I also understand what you're saying um, because there's nothing more likely to turn me off than an ugly building. Um, and, uh, but, you know, the ugly building is the thing we want to get rid of, you know. Why would we put that on the front page? Um, <laughs> you know, it's, um, so, so perhaps for things that are going to be handed out or made available for pickup, maybe we can have some additional information on the back, make it a two-sided thing. Mm -hmm. um, Another thing is that um, QR codes are absolutely wonderful. They confuse some people. Mm -hmm. um, if we can also have a URL on there as absolutely. well as the QR code, that would be um, of, um, of, of assistance. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the, the entire detailed one, just um, sure. you know, top and art slash public art. Sure, right? absolutely. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, yeah. Nick. Um, I, I prefer the uh, A, only because it does have a little more information. As an artist, you know, when I pick it up, I mean, I can see kind of everything right here, mm -hmm. and I don't have to do any more work, you know, to find out more, you know, that it's, you know, the submission, compensation, and, and the project. Yeah. So I, I kind of like uh, the, uh, the, uh, the first right. one. Yeah, I also like the uh, A, but seeing that this is National Women's Day, I think one of the athletes should be female or neuter. <laughs> I, you know, I. Why not both? Exactly. Why not both? Point, point taken. I'm wondering if I couldn't take one of these there, and put a ponytail or something. There. Yeah. Um, just a minute. Ponytails are indicating what? <laughs> <laughs> point taken. <laughs> How about braids? No, that doesn't. Willie Nelson. Okay. <laughs> How do you want it to be a woman then? <laughs> a skirt. <laughs> Um, no, I think um, androgynous figures wearing, um, you know, sports clothes are fine by me. <laughs> How you figure that out? <laughs> it's going to be up to you. But either have, you know, male, female, or two. 
you know, Too androgynous. Yes. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I know that um, when we did the murals at Sisler Field, we did the, uh, you know, the baseball murals, and there was some rumpus from the people who used the field saying that the girls also played softball there. Mm. So we have to mm -hmm. maintain this <coughs> yeah. balance between, um, you know, teams of uh, different sexes. So Well, I will tell you that, um, and this is something that I've run into quite frequently um, in the last years, but uh, going to look at particularly free graphics online, it's really hard to find diversity right. of any kind. Right. <laughs> there's a lot of white men right. <laughs> and there's a lot of men. And uh, there's a lot of, well, some white women and everything else is kind of yeah. sprinkled in there. So mm -hmm. um, I will poke around and see if I can find something a little yeah. less. Um, yeah, probably the easiest one detail. to change would be the tennis player. Yeah. Graham mm -hmm. notwithstanding. <laughs> yeah. Look, look well, you know, if I put, if I just closed up between the knees like it's a skirt and then put a little ponytail flying out, maybe. Yeah, that would work. All right. Okay. Okay, um, so I don't think we need to take a vote on this, but it seems that <coughs> A was the overwhelming choice of the committee. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Dawn, thank you. You Absolutely. did a great job. Absolutely. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll make edits to this. Um, next week is spring break, so I won't be teaching, so I will have next week Breaks. to work on it. I'll send it to Diane, and you guys can distribute and the edited one for approval. Mm -hmm. Does that work? And, okay. um, and you'll also put together... Um, the material to go onto the website. Just to make uh, sure it's yes, not once just it's approved. Once it's there. approved, I certainly will. Mm -hmm. And um, also, I wanted to just double check: Do we still want to have the the deadline? Because um, approval and deadline in the small print there is we're going to discuss it at the April thirteenth meeting. Should we move that to the May meeting? And you can't vote online. You have to vote at a meeting. Right. So. Yeah, if I you, think that's you all a good need idea to make make sure sign move on to all May. the changes now and vote on it, or you can we she can bring back a new version to the April meeting. In April, well, okay. I, I I don't think we need to. I think we have enough confidence in Dawn to just, you know, and it's got to go through you anyway, Diane. So I don't think we have to reapprove the the flyer. Okay, okay. so we're just going to approve this with edits. Yeah, we really need to get people to send some proposals. Yeah, we need to, in. we need to have it moving. Yes. Okay. Well, one other thing I would just wanted to mention is that usually these call to artists are not like pick up flyers that people just so, you know, that's the whole thing is that we're, we're we need to get it out and put it online. Mm -hmm. That's probably the way they're gonna, you know. Right. See it. I, I still think this yeah. is a lot more eye catching with the follow up of the you know the detailed thing that you know you and Dawn both worked on. Yeah. You know, I think if you you know overload something with all that technical information, you know. It's not going to be as, you know, you know, attractive or, you know, illicit yeah. information that's something like this. Yeah. And, and I can certainly work with you on some sort of graphic or something for the website if you, if you want or work with somebody on putting stuff on the website. Um, I'm familiar with, with WordPress, so okay. happy to work with you on doing that. And we'll just kind of go with this theme and get the information out there however... Sure. You guys decided you whenever know, you have it ready, where it we'll, goes out. We'll get it out. Okay. okay. Super. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Pete the Pelican photo, and that's got to be coordinated with the mayor's office. So I guess we're going to try to get as many members of the public art committee in on this. So that's just a matter of coordinating with uh, Trish. Okay, and then we have the Kyle, Pierce, Sylvester, the cat, the, you know, the placement. Graham, do you have any ideas? Um, I still think that it should be near Pete the Pelican. Mm -hmm. Okay, Robert? Pete the Pelican on the ground with a little barrier around it. Okay. Um, looking at this, fence. looking at this yeah, picture with the sign, mm -hmm. um, I think if it's, you know, got the sign anywhere close to it, that it's going to stand off mm -hmm. um, and I noticed there's a lot of area there I definitely think it should be in that area with Pete, right. Pete the Pelican but mm -hmm. I think there's plenty of room there to have it off a little bit yeah. because the sign is going to kind of draw attention to it like it's not going to mm -hmm. get lost you know in the area but definitely near near the Pete the Pelican yeah okay. in that same gravelly area Nick um, yeah I, I agree with Dawn you know I was just down there and it's sort of like a little mini park yeah. mm -hmm. you know there mm -hmm. and all 
And so, yeah, you have the sign uh, behind the pelican and all. Mm -hmm. And so there's another bench, you know, there's the pelican bench there. There's another bench if you're facing the pelican in the water to the mm -hmm. left, yes. the palm tree there. Yeah. And I was just thinking, you know, that it would add a little more balance, right. you know, to have the cat there. But, you know, you'd need to, uh, you know, a, a foot high pedestal, some kind of right, a concrete, right. something to get it off the ground. And then, right, and to secure and, it, I think, too. Well, that, and I mean, it'll, look, I guess, a little more balanced with the pelican there mm -hmm. on the bench, and it won't be down there, right. but kind of, uh, people use it, you know, for photo ops and stuff. People were taking pictures when I was down there yeah. sitting on the bench with the pelican. Mm -hmm. They'll probably do the same thing with the kitty right. and, and all, but I was just thinking there, that bench, uh, because it's going to not just be the cat, it'll be the cat and a sign behind it right. like right. that. So just kind of, you know, make okay. it. So do I have a motion to place uh, Sylvester the cat close to the pelican statue? Um, <clears throat> I'll move to place the Sylvester the cat statue next to, near the bench, ne near the, the pelican, Pete the pelican statue. I think that's much better. Okay. <laughs> do, I, do I have a second? Anyone? Yeah. Robert? No second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. He's going next to the uh, the pelican. Well, over, not right next to the right, pelican. Right, right, yeah. But, you know, mm -hmm. in that okay. little mini park area. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I agree as well that uh, I meant to say this about sticking him up off the ground a little. Right. Um, if we can do that at the same time, it's... Right, and I think I think for security reasons too, it's better to have him on some kind of support and really bolt it in. Yeah. So, because I know that uh, a lot of Kyle's yeah. Yeah. sculptures so around town has gotten lifted. So, is there anything that we've done that would preclude that? No. Good. Okay. Uh, the ordinance status. Hooray! 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 <laughs> the revised <laughs> ordinance was passed at the uh, BOC meeting. Yes. Uh, yes. So uh, it's in your backup materials and. Uh, it was a long time coming. <laughs> it's a lot of uh, very labor intensive, not to mention all of the committees. It had to grind its way through, but uh, it's done. So, mm -hmm. okay. Nice. Um, so please take out your old ordinance from your notebook if you're keeping all the things in there and replace it with this one so yes. you won't be confused. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, the Indiana uh, video, we d took care of that already. Yeah. Um, Megan, do you have the budget update and the contributions? It is, as of yesterday, $184,910.93. Um, Sydney Prusso's reimbursement went through, Kyle Pierce's payment went through, mm -hmm. and there's just a little bit of interest gained. Okay. And there are no projects in the works. Okay. I guess the next thing would be the clerk's office. Did we get anything from Manatee Village? No. Not that I've heard. I don't know. She keeps us abreast of the status of everything. Right. It could still be in process. Right. Because I know that they're starting to rent, I think. So we should be, we should be getting something. That's got to be at least a million in there. I'm trying to think of any others that are looming that we can think of. Okay, the CRA mural projects, we haven't gotten any submissions for that. No, but again, I've, I've gone to a couple of places on the weekend when I had time and was not able to speak to an owner. Mm -hmm. So um, next week, I'm going to go during the week instead of on a weekend and hopefully be able to right. snag some people. Okay, I know that um, um, John Stamper uh, was just before the Heritage Preservation Board, and I think he indicated that uh, Carmelitas, is that the name of the, the Mexican restaurant there? I think that's going into its final permitting and thing, so we should get a fee from that, I would think, and I, I know that he's indicated that he was interested in doing a mural. Okay. So maybe that'll come up. New business, donation of two historic Kapok tree caryatids. Well, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who was on this committee, and she pointed out that they're production pieces. So they are out of our purview. 
Okay. Um, is that what this is? That's what that is. Okay. There was a, an individual who contacted the mayor about making a donation of two of the columns to the city. Mm -hmm. And I did have a meeting with the city manager, mm -hmm. and we were kind of looking around at various locations and things like that. And uh, it was also part of looking at the uh, sponge docks location for uh, Stevens uh, piece. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, a while ago, we had talked about doing uh, some kind of uh, landscape piece along the bike trail. Mm. And that was uh, the, the northernmost part of the trail at that point, which is Safford and Live Oak. Mm -hmm. Uh, was originally going to be pickleball courts, and that's no longer the case. And uh, so we had, that had been a prime location for us to, you know, look at doing a landscape feature, mm -hmm. you know, kind of maybe even a, a respite type idea, an artistic respite series, uh, things for the bicyclists. Mm -hmm. But... Um, so uh, I was talking to Lucy Ann Robinson, who had kind of uh, spearheaded that to see whether she might be still interested in, you know, thinking about doing something there. And she mentioned that the uh, that the uh, karyatids were production pieces. So by ordinance, we can't do anything gotcha. with production pieces. Okay. Okay. Um, Diane, you want to take the next one? Consideration of public art and green consultants. Um. My idea was primarily just a public art consultant. I know um, a couple of years ago when I first started being the liaison for the public art committee, um, Mayor Vaticiotis had brought up at one of our meetings that it might be a good idea to do a, have a consultant kind of look over everything that, you know, we're, we're wanting to accomplish in Tarpon Springs and our public, you know, buildings and things like that, and uh, come up with, help the committee come up with a plan, you know, that they can follow, because, and at the time, you know, I was very new on it, and, you know, they were moving along with some projects, so we, uh, you know, the committee just kind of said, you know, we're probably not going to do it at this time, but now that I've been on the committee for quite a few years now, and watched a lot of people come on and off the public art committee and then you know having the presentation that we had months ago with uh, the Tampa um, uh, public art uh, administrator um, I just thought to myself it's like well maybe we've gotten to the point we matured to the point where it might not be a bad investment just because it seems like a consultant can kind of hone things and then you know create a blueprint so that whatever committee member comes on and off, you've got a plan that you're following, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing, no matter who's on the committee at a certain time, you know, whether it's a five-year plan, you know, a 10-year plan. So I asked um, uh, the, the woman who, who do, is the Tarpon, I mean, the Tampa um, Public Art uh, Administrator, and uh, she had, had um, talked about Ann Weichel. Um, I had met her years ago when I was, um, many years ago. She's in St. Pete, and uh, I think she's retired now, but I'm not sure what her capacity is or she could even do that. But um, I just wanted to throw it out to the committee to see if you all thought that you wanted me to look into that a little bit further and see what kind of costs we were talking about and kind of like get an outline of what they actually do and, you know, how it would, mm -hmm. how it would progress, you know. Graham, your feelings on that? <clears throat> yeah, um, I've um, I've had some thoughts on this, not particularly on hiring a consultant. That, that hadn't occurred to me, although I know a number of other cities do. Um, it was observing the, uh, the the planning process for um, Connect Tarpon and and so on that went on last year and. Um, and, and looking at the way that the city is intending and has asked through the ballot box for the citizens to get involved in planning um, on a cyclical basis for the city um, for, uh, for, the future, for future years. 
um, it occurred to me that we could possibly benefit from those ideas by, um, by declaring that we're open for a public art planning process mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. we should conduct a series of workshops um, led by the public art committee but to which the public and um, uh, stakeholders in the city uh, not just you know general members of the public but also um, employees of the city and elected officials of the city um, could come and tell um, or, or submit um, things for the public art committee to look at mm -hmm. in order to come up with a cyclical uh, public art plan um, and I was you know just thinking about that and thinking that, that would be a very good idea mm -hmm. and I'm not sure whether everyone else would agree with it because it would make everyone on the committee work just a little tiny bit harder which <laughs> may or may not suit people um, I personally don't mind but you know Robert? there we go um, I you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm uh, thinking that, well, what our, what our position is as, as the, the public art committee. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, are, we, are we the public art design committee? You know, and, and are, we, you know, are we responsible for coming up with projects and things to do? Or are we here to accept and, and uh, comment and... and uh, Facilitate, help facilitate mm -hmm. the public art that's proposed to us, mm -hmm. and the, the whole question comes around: um, what what is that role? I think we've we've discussed it earlier, a year ago or something like mm -hmm. that, about what uh, what is our duty, what is our responsibility to the to the city of Tarpon Springs, and uh, one is we we uh, can only make suggestions and recommendations to the the uh, council, and so so they have the ultimate decision making on that. Mm -hmm. So we're still in an advisory position, in a yes. way. and and that sounds like we're more in a policy position. And I I could see that. I could see how that would be beneficial in a way. But uh, um, is is that what our you know what our strength is? What our duty is? Mm -hmm. here, you know and. Uh, do, do we have a vision of what Tarpon Springs should look like? Is, is that what this would end up being? You know, in yeah. sort of like uh, meeting with the public and, and uh, uh, having everybody come and talk about all the art they want and all that kind of stuff and everybody goes away. Mm. You know, we've been to those, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Not about yeah. art, but um, about buildings <coughs> and cities right. and mm -hmm. towns. And, you yes. know, and, and there's all this big hoopla and all this great visual stuff like that. And everybody wants uh, a restaurant at the end of the pier, and they don't want garbage trucks going out there. That, yeah. those, that's the two things that, that came out. Every one of these things I went into in St. Pete about the mm -hmm. pier. Mm -hmm. They want the restaurant out there, but you can't have garbage trucks going out there. So, mm -hmm. so you know, it, it, it's great to have all that public feedback. And I, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that would be interesting to have public feedback here. I, aren't we open to that? Sure. Mm -hmm. We never have anybody feeding us back. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. I could see us going into being more policy oriented, I guess is what, what you're saying, based on what the public might want. But, you yeah. know, but what, you know, the public wants a lot of different things. Well, one of the things that I think that the committee has maybe struggled with sometimes when certain, um, you know, projects have come forth is the location of it, right. you know, and that, I thought that's where a consultant could really kind of vet, you know, th are these locations actually viable, you know, kind of thing. But I, I do agree with getting, you know, the public and especially the city officials who, you know, it's like you could come up with and say, well, okay, we need a we need something for this cat, and we want it done right away, but they may have five projects ahead of you, you know, kind of. Mm -hmm. So it's like coordinating, you know, coming up with a way to coordinate, <clears throat> you know, not only the location of them, but maybe the installation and what in, can and cannot be done, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that's some of the things we've, we, um, 
face with Stephen's, you know, project, especially since it was such a large project mm -hmm. and, you know, moving ahead. And it's just like with all these people, you know, different people coming on and off the committee, it's like some of you have been on the committee for months, you know, you're aware of what's going on, but newcomers are, you know, it, it's hard to catch up, you know, so there's all these different visions coming on at different times and not understanding the backstories, you know, even though we give you this huge binder with lots of stuff, I'm just like, you don't have anything else to do, but, yeah. you know, um, it's just a matter of, I, I was just trying to come up with, and we have a master plan, but we don't really ever look at that, you know, kind of thing, but it was more about what locations are really acceptable, and then, you know, of the projects that come up, what are the boundaries for maintenance and for keeping them up and things like that? It's like, it's not like, okay, let's place this piece of art, but then, you know, who's going to be the keeper to tell us when something has to be, you know, refurbished or, you know, so there's just a lot that goes on, you know, that. I can, can I sure. continue with this? Uh, this sounds like almost like an administrator. More of a, a, a blueprint, I was thinking. But, I mean, it's like, I know Dunedin has done it. You know, they, they have, um, they had a consultant come in, but it was many, many years ago. I don't know. Yeah, and, and you have consultants come in for, for specific things from time to mm -hmm. time, too, and, and, or, a, you know, a particular period of development or something. That, that's all right. But uh, who is, it, would that person be part of the Public Art Committee? Would they be part of your, your, uh, I think it was just a study. Is this a city person or is no, this No, this would be an outside person that would be have be, you know, know a lot about, you know, the the art of yeah. public and, public and art. They would be paid though. Probably. Yeah. They sure. better be. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think they <laughs> would spend the time. Right. right. But right. it sounds like you're saying not on an ongoing basis but for a on initial study. like a, a study project and then here's the findings kind yeah. of situation. Okay. Nick? Yeah. But um, I mean, it sounded like we we're talking about how we interface with the s different stakeholders mm -hmm. and, and all as the public art committee. And, uh, you know, I think we need to flesh this out a bit more. You know, who's the, you know, consultant? Uh, you know, uh, yeah, how does this work? Uh, and all, uh, you know, you would prefer somebody with uh, local knowledge, right. you know, and experience here in Tarpon Springs, you know, because every community is different. And all, and it would seem to uh, put them in a lot better, you know, position to, you know, to help right. us. Well, to answer, uh, sorry, no. to answer Robert's question about whether, you know, we, you know, suggest projects or vet projects, we kind of do both. Mm -hmm. well, we have over the years, and you know, there is a master plan that was worked on, you know quite a bit, maybe uh, we should just revisit that and bring, you know, some comments on the master plan back to the next meeting uh, because, you know, we could be just reinventing the wheel at this point. And, uh, you know, uh, I think take another, also another look at the revised ordinance and, um, you know, we also have a five-year plan that's probably you know, maturing at this point. Mm -hmm. So maybe if uh, we could go back and look over some of the existing documents already. But, uh, you know, if you look at the mission statement in the ordinance, you know, we're responsible for the way the city looks, the appearance of the city, yeah. beautify the city. Graham, I know you're champing at the bit here. Um, <clears throat> we're constrained considerably by the Sunshine Laws. Correct. Which means that members of the committee cannot discuss anything um, outside of committee meetings unless they are in committee workshop meetings. And this is why I was suggesting that we have a workshop mm -hmm. meeting. We can get together, we can have a series of them. Um, I think the very first one should be a review of any plans that exist at the moment to go over so that all members of the committee are up to date on, on those plans. Um, we can then move forward from there as to whether we want to revise the plans, whether we want to do completely new ones, whether we want to hire a consultant to help us, um, whether we want to, um, you know, throw it open to, um, you know, other people mm -hmm. to come and help us or what. But the, I think the very first thing that we have to do is um, is in a um, in a setting where we can discuss but don't have to worry about voting, mm -hmm. i.e., a workshop. 
mm -hmm. um, is that we should get together and talk about this. Mm -hmm. That's what I was trying to say, but right. obviously can not very can successfully. It be, can it be uh, not necessarily here at the city hall? Can we meet, for example, down at the sponge docks? It has to uh, be recorded. It has to, oh, be, it has to be recorded, recorded. yeah. Um, it's, well, it's, I mean, yeah. only reason I said it because it's when we're here, I can speak to issues in the abstract. Right. When we're all there together, I can walk and kind of show you mm -hmm. what I'm talking about right. and kind mm -hmm. of give you an experience, you know, what the, my experience is uh, and all, because, you know, I grew up down there from, you know, I was right. born and raised here and don't even remember the first time I was down there. You know, mm -hmm. there was wooden docks when <laughs> right. I was a little yeah. boy down there and all in the sponge right. boats were uh, all tied right. off bow in. But I mean, I can, if we can have workshops in the locations almost, if, if we're talking about something, it just makes it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Particularly, you know, the, that area and, and, and all, just because, you know, I can kind of give you my experience and all, and then you can, you know, and we're not talking in the abstract, but we're actually, you know, right. you know, yeah. there and we're talking about things and how you yeah. see it and we, how everybody else sees it. We, we, we might be able to take advice from someone in city administration um, as to whether workshops can include field trips. Let me find out. Um, I believe that it, the Sunshine Law applies primarily to things that you're voting on. Right. But if it's, a, if it's, if it's information fact finding, gathering, fact, fact finding, finding yeah. it, we don't, we can do that. So mm -hmm. let me just clarify that mm -hmm. and um, I'll email you all. Okay. You know, right. so, uh, could, could we possibly set a date for a workshop? Well, I think as soon as Diane comes back with an, uh, I'll be able thing, to find we out can, by tomorrow. We can get the date going. Yeah. I mean, not us now. I mean, right. you know, obviously we've, we've got to poll everybody and see when this room is free and, mm -hmm. and so on. And, uh, and materials have to be assembled and prepared and mm -hmm. staff members scheduled and, <laughs> yes. and all of that. No, I understand that. Okay. So, um, I just wanted to say back to the, um, you know, the original discussion about uh, consultant or plan or what our role is and all that kind of stuff. Um, as as kind of new to it, I am playing catch up, and it's super exciting. And I look at the city when I'm driving around with a whole different eye, mm -hmm. um, which is neat. But I will say that before I signed up to be on a totally different committee, and I was looking at signing up for committees, I didn't even know there was a public art committee. Mm -hmm. So had I known, I probably would have been here a lot sooner. <laughs> but I learned about it through doing those workshops mm -hmm. on the city plan. Right. And some of those plans involved public art on some of the big crosswalks. And I got very excited about that. Mm -hmm. I went to some of those workshops. I met some people. They encouraged me to. So it was kind of a, right, right. a domino effect. But I guess my point in saying all this is getting um, public input can sometimes open up, um, you know, a can of worms, but can also open up a lot more um, interest and excitement in the city about things mm -hmm. that we're doing. Exactly And so. get us involved in some of the things that are already going to be happening right. because of the city planning and having people aware. Because I thought, oh, you know, I hope the city picks something really nice for this new <laughs> proposed thing. I had no idea that this was even a thing. So, right. um, you know, I think... You, there's a time and a place for the public input, but I do look forward to getting together on a workshop and really diving into exactly our roles and how we want to approach it and plan for it. And final note, if if there are some great places for artwork and we don't have a plan for it, the void will be filled, you know, <laughs> maybe with something not so nice. So, because um, I see that driving around too. I'm like, oh, that would have been a really nice, Yeah, you know. well, there's... Um you know, well, this goes back to the CRA mural, you know, mm. and one of the things that we kind of insisted on when this was brought up before the Board of Commissioners is that, you know, we can vet the designs. You know, if they're applying for the CRA grant money, you know, we, we get to look at what they're planning. So, right. So we don't ha end up with something outrageous. <laughs> right. But watching the last meeting from my hospital bed <laughs> last <laughs> month, you were talking about 
you know, murals on the back of the buildings, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, that front that on alley. Tarpon Avenue. Mm -hmm. We did an extensive project like that about five years ago. And I was, I'm sitting there going, we did that already, we did that already. <laughs> so, you know, but it, it, it didn't work for a number of reasons, mm -hmm. primarily because of the issue of uh, liability insurance. Mm. So, uh, you know, in fact, some of the buildings, you know, we even had designs for them. I mean, that's how far along it was. Wow. And, uh, but, you know, that's something we can definitely revisit because I know they're doing the Cohatch building now. And, mm -hmm. you know, so it's... Yeah. Uh, I think a workshop would be a great place to talk definitely. about all those kind no, of things. I, yeah. I'm, I'm strongly in favor of it. But as I said, Diane, you can do a little homework for us and find out what we can do and how we can do it. And, you know, it's, as I said, fact finding, information sharing, you know, the, the sunshine yeah. laws really come into place because, you know, I mean, we're just, we're just looking for feedback from the community, not necessarily something to vote on. Right. So I think we can, we're pretty clear. Okay. We'll so um, anyway, Tina, would you like to say something? Of yes. course. <laughs> sitting there all quiet by yourself with Stephen. <laughs> well, um, all right. So, uh, of course, I came to talk about the caryatids today, which now seems to be off your table. But I think the comments that I had, had to make are something that this, um, that this group should hear anyway in case there are future projects. And I also have a couple more questions for you about that project. Does that mean that those things are now going to be decided by the Board of Commissioners or some other group? Yes. Which one? I don't know. Okay. Uh, who donated them? Uh, I wasn't given the name of the individual. I just got an, an email from the mayor saying that an individual had donated them. Okay. It wasn't specified who the donor was. Okay. Well, here's, here's what I wanted to say about them. Uh, unfortunately, and I'm going to read part of this because I have no memory. Um, <laughs> The 20-foot questionable reproductions have nothing to do with local culture, but they are truly brilliant examples of Greek-American schlock. Uh, <laughs> something right out of my big fat Greek wedding and paying thousands of dollars to transport them to Tarpon Springs is a waste, and here's why. Um, in terms of historic preservation, it is considered a best practice to highlight the community's authentic building or cultural traditions. And to the best of my knowledge, no ancient Greeks ever lived in Tarpon Springs. <laughs> Nor did people here build in Greek architectural traditions, whether ancient or modern. And that includes these kind of pillars. Except perhaps for the highly modified neo-Byzantine style of St. Nicholas Cathedral, which is done with Florida brick. Mm -hmm. um, they adopted instead Florida vernacular architecture and sometimes applied decorative elements. Another thing that you want to consider is that Greek identification with its ancient culture largely collapsed with the advent of the Christian Byzantine Empire in um, uh, about 300 something AD. Uh, Greeks even called themselves Romi. Romans, uh, until the early 19th century. And the reason they changed to calling themselves Hellenes, or Hellenes, is because they wanted the Western powers who revered ancient Greek civilization to help them win against the Ottoman Turks. And so they suddenly started adopting the identification with ancient Greek culture. But underneath, Greek culture is no longer ancient Greek culture. There are survivals, of course, here and there, but it's not the same thing. There are regional cultures in Greece. There is some pan-Greek culture, too, but ancient culture is not what is considered Greek culture and certainly is not the culture of the people who came here. Um, so... Uh, in case you're wondering why you should might want to listen to my opinion, uh, I worked in the Bureau of Historic Preservation for 13 years. The director of the State Folklife Program co-authored one of the only comprehensive books on Florida's traditional culture, have been invited by the Greek Ministry of Culture and museums and universities to lecture. I'm on the Pinellas County Historical Commission and Historic Preservation Commission and so on and so forth. 
I know Greek culture. I know Greek American culture. Okay. Um, however, there is something else I would like to suggest to all of you that just occurred to me, actually, as I was partly leading a tour the other day. Mm. The city's logo is the diving helmet. And Nick, you can just close your ears right here. You know, <laughs> this is a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and what we, the person we have right here is a National Endowment for the Arts Fellow, the only living one in Tarpon Springs, for his diving helmets, which are closely associated with local culture. And they're not just functional diving helmets, just maritime craft. They have been taken now to an art form. The city doesn't have any. Nick is lending one to our, to our museum, you know? Why are we not thinking about this when it's so allied with our culture, even though we're not really the sponge capital of the world anymore? But we pretend like we are. <laughs> but, and it's still part of our culture and part of our, our very unique history. So that's what I want to say. OK, thank you. Unfortunately, if we buy a helmet from Nick, we'll have to kind of kick him off the committee. <laughs> It'll take years, though. All right, okay. <laughs> Stephen, is there anything you'd like to say? or? Um, that was quite an education. I appreciate it. Um, uh, actually, yeah, I, will, um, I really like the idea um, of the um, more comprehensive working in the committee. Mm -hmm. And I think you highlighted there's a lot of dimensions to it. I'll just say from my perspective, I've kind of... Uh, I see that I see a lot of potential in the process of working on this project with you all. I've um, I've seen on a couple of layers, on a couple of levels. Mm -hmm. One of them is, you know, when we were kind of trying to find the site versus a wild goose chase. I actually stepped back and realized, hey, wait a minute, what I'm doing here is a survey. So, and that's actually valuable information. It's been been valuable uh, to me growth wise. But I see like layers of okay signage and what do you have now and when when there was the the site seemed like up for grabs i went and surveyed the whole sponge docks <laughs> just because i like i'd rather know and have give you an alternative if for some reason the commissioner was uh, or you know the, the the city manager wasn't going to allow that site mm -hmm. but in the process i did a survey so i'm like you know all the and then i was looking on a, on a, on a different scale once i talked to carolyn lanford just about that grant uh, what they did they had a survey last night i went to that session mm -hmm. last night the beginning of it but and that is about the african african american community but when i after i talked to her i, I had her level of planning in my head when i went around and i see a lot of potential so I think that um, I, there would be more work as somebody. But I also think that, as you're pointing out, there's already pieces. And I think if it starts getting up and running and people are getting more on the same page, I think in some ways it will job will get easier to coordinate. Mm -hmm. And also, I think there's op I think if you can sh if you, everybody can start to see the, the opportunities, I think they'll get better. And I think they'll happen. I also think that it'll be easier. Mm -hmm. So we've got great opportunities here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, okay. Looking forward to uh, the completion of your, your pieces. And uh, see, are there any other uh, committee or staff comments? Diane? Yeah, I just wanted to mention that uh, at the Cultural Center on um, Saturday, March 11th, um, Tarpon Arts is partnering with Sages uh, who do um, wonderful uh, Plays for you know seniors, and uh, we're we're partnered with them for three of their plays, and uh, so the first one is on March 11th at two o'clock in the community theater, and it's called Phony Baloney. So it's kind of uh, Graham was talking before the meeting about you know the scams that a lot of seniors are facing, you know, with Medicare and and different subjects, and so they are going to kind of it's kind of an it's it is an educational play that mm -hmm. will kind of hope to raise awareness, you know, of some of the pitfalls and things that to be aware of, but in a, a really fun um, way. Mm -hmm. And the police department is, you know, part of it too. So it, it'll be lots of fun. So I know that everybody is probably focused on the fine art uh, festival this weekend too. So as you're walking around and you're tired after buying so many things at the <laughs> fine arts festival, stop by the cultural center. It's a free play. It starts at two o'clock. It'll probably be about an hour and a half in length, so mm -hmm. come on by if you can. Okay. And I also wanted to tell you that there's amazing things going on at the Heritage Museum. We are 
uh, walls are going up and lots of things are being done. So, you know, we're, we're still in construction phase, but things are happening. So stop by sometime and see all the wonderful things that are going on. Very excited about the renovations that we really need. And uh, mm. the cultural center is going to have to be next, you know. <laughs> right. If, yeah some of the bathrooms and the floors <coughs> and things like that. But that's a process that we do in the city, you know, and to keep up these wonderful um, historic buildings that we, you know, have. So anyway, that's all right. I have. Dawn, do you have anything? You um, I just wanted clarification. I know at the end of the last meeting we were talking about maybe an alternate site for the one piece um, with the conch shell and all that of Stevens and maybe a different site other than the sponge docks. Was that decided? I wasn't here, so oh. I'm here. No, I, I think we left it uh, that it was going to be out at the marina, but okay. the conch shell part of it was not, that's a different plan. Right. That's not included. Just in as it. opposed to the to the other one, um, I know there was there was talk that, that there was an alternate site maybe. The, I think the, um, um, the general feeling was that until we have, or until we hear a concrete proposal mm. um, with dollars attached, then we really didn't have anything to talk about. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, uh, you know, I did some site visits with the city manager, mm -hmm. and um, I think once he saw the location, I think what had happened was I think he mixed up the two pieces, uh. and he thought the crawl was going to be the piece that was going to be on the waterfront, and he was concerned about blocking the water views and everything oh, else. Oh, okay. So when, when I you know, clarified what was going where, then he felt that that location was good because it's basically an open arch, so you're really not, yeah. you know, blocking anything. Yeah, okay. And, I finally um, did my field trip, and I thought it would look great there. Um, right. Mm -hmm. so. And, right, in terms of the, um, uh, the conch shell, um, when we had the competition for the, for the uh, Black Heritage Project, uh, the runner-up was Louis Marcoya, and he had a lenticular of a um, sponge that basically looked like, you know, an African-American head. It was quite beautiful. Oh, wow. So that might be something else that, you know, we could consider looking at. Yeah. Because if, that was really a stunning piece. Yeah, if yeah. somebody would bring a proposal before the committee, I think we'd definitely look at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Because um, it, it was the runner-up, yes? Well, I was on that committee, and <laughs> and uh, I, I'm not sure it came out very highly rated, just to let you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it came down to uh, Marcoy and Stephen. I think Stephen came out a lot higher than Marcoy. Right, okay. No, well, then that's why he's sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, excuse me, if I could ask, like, when do you think you're going to start fabrication? Actually, the, you know, actually, we're seeing something happening out at the sites. So, um, okay, my rough schedule here. <laughs> um, so um, I am in deep into design, and I've been doing a lot of site analysis to kind of uh, double and triple check things. Uh, and within a week to two weeks, I'll be doing some fabrication in my studio. Um, be a week or after that, it should be some, probably some initial site uh, work. I'm going to have to actually order these resin panels. It's a big deal because they're a lot of money. So I have to get that right, and that's going to be a bunch of, uh, about a lead time. So I'm looking at installation starting towards the end of April, the actual on the site, the, you know, like starting to put things together down there. Uh, there will be some probably some things initially because that if I get some things initially, it'll go speedier on the other end. And then um, although, again, the contract I've got till September 20th, I'm trying to finish by mid-June. So i got some wiggle room, but I'm trying to. Both sites? Yeah, wow. yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Which one are you starting with? Uh, well, you know, the way it's worked out with a sort of a little bit of delay, I'm going to be, well, I'm going to be doing some metal fabrication simultaneously and just in, in advance, mm -hmm. prep it in advance. And because the graphics have to be designed and kind of ordered, I kind of need to do those together. Right. Plus, what I'm finding is that the work is, they're talking to one another. All the things, all the all the different people who have weighed in, <laughs> from <laughs> public works to yourself right. to the city. All that stuff is actually feeding it, and funny enough, it's like you know, you, you know, the the designer hat is really you know, like the artist hat is like okay, has one idea, and then the designer hat interprets these things as like, oh wait a minute, this is actually better. Mm -hmm. So it's designed. The work's gotten better because of that, right. you know. 
anyway, that's the that's the I'll basic gist. If you would just keep me uh, kind mm -hmm. of like in the loop about when you know you're going to be at the different sites because our public works. Right, or I'm going to. I figured I have to give some notice to public works on certain things, especially around safety and things like right. that. Exactly. There shouldn't be too much heavy intervention in the beginning. I mean, not at the sponge docks. Um, the key thing is to get the the plinth pour there. And that's not, my, I mean, I make sure nobody does anything in the concrete, but um, I, that's a, the only real risk right there is just if I have any exposed mechanical stuff to fasten it, I don't want anybody falling on that. So that, that, it's relatively minor, but that's, and then the other one, I'm actually gonna start strategically. So I'm gonna actually be able to retain some of that and that fence is a barrier initially. Mm -hmm. So, and then once that, once that, that, once that chain link comes down, then I'll start with actually a, um, uh, a safety, you know, fencing. Okay. But I'll coordinate with that, with, with Public Works, too. Wonderful. Thank mm -hmm. you. Great. Great. One more thing? Sure, Graham. Um, yeah, now that I'm um, <clears throat> this week or this month, rather, I'm not the, um, um, the neutral person in charge, um, I just want to throw out there that uh, the, the whole thing about the, 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 uh, the mural on Riverside Drive being rejected by whoever, whichever nameless person it was that rejected it that um, works for the city. Um, just, I wasn't able to say this last time, but it burned me up because it was rejected with an apparent rejection of artistic merit. Mm. And If, if that is going to be the case, that pr projects proposed by the Public Art Committee are being rejected by city employees or officials um, because of perceived lack of artistic merit, then what the heck are we doing here? Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm still burning about it. I'm not expecting an answer. I just mm -hmm. want to let you all know. Mm -hmm that it still does not sit well. Well, if it makes you feel slightly better, when we were working, when the subcommittee or committee was working on the Black Heritage Project, we actually voted that when a decision was made, that our decision would be the only one that would go to the Board of Commissioners, that they would not have a choice. So it was our our decision as a public art committee as to what project was being put forward. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, but no, I, I, I agree with you. It's, uh, as we all know, art is very subjective. And, mm -hmm. you know, we sit here with, you know, credentials. Yes. You know, it's just like people who are engineers or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, carpenters or public works people, you know. Uh, the very fact that, you know, we got on the committee was because we met certain criteria. Mm -hmm. And uh, I agree with you, which should be respected. Yeah. yeah. And, so. and, you know, I'm, pr I'm probably the, the least qualified artistically from anybody in, in terms of, you know, visual art. And, and, I, and I think of people like, like Robert, of, of, of Dawn, of, 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 of Nick, of, of yourself, of your stuff. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, what a slap in the face. Mm hmm Yeah. Just... I think I would probably Still be more rankles. upset about it had I been at it from the beginning. And also, though, uh, you know, had there been eight, you know, eight submissions and then this committee decided on that one was the best one, mm -hmm. then I would probably be a lot more upset. Once I found out that it was the only submission, then I was a little less upset about it. But you know, I wasn't in on it from the beginning, so mm -hmm. right. you know, I don't, I don't have as much skin in the game as you do. But I understand what you're saying because it sets a dangerous <clears throat> pre precedent mm -hmm. as far as you know. What are we doing here? And yeah. it was not something we encountered on Sisler Field, hmm. right, Diane? No, we we just got the submission and we approved it, and you know, <clears throat> it went forward. We did vet it with the athletic department, right? To, that would that yeah. that was really more feedback. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that we got then, you know, and that was the suggestion too, where, mm -hmm. you know, they wanted the softball. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, which was a very logical, 
request, which we, we responded to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but uh, no, I agree with Graham. It's, yeah. you know, if you have, uh, you know, a panel of experts, as they call, you know, or even somebody that, you know, supposedly, you know, know something about the arts or graphics or anything like that, or, you know, your helmets. I mean, we all have, yeah. you know, some kind of, you know, we, you know, I've made money from taking photographs, God help us. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway. Okay, if, and if we're, no more comments? Nope. Uh, it is, this meeting is adjourned at 3.34 p.m. Our next regular meeting is Wednesday, April 12, 2023, at 2 p.m. in this same location. Alrighty. Thank you all. I've got to run to let...